Hello and welcome to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this here is Season 2 of Saving Your Disastrous Campaign. And this campaign here will be called uh, The Royal Disaster. Um, let me give it a bit of an introduction because that's actually funny. You will ask yourself, Saiken, why are we in the middle of a, um, of a mission? Well, that's a good question, my friend, and I'm going to answer that. So normally when I receive um, uh, failed save games, they are somewhat in the middle of a mission. I abort the mission and I'll take a look at the Geoscape just to find out how bad it is. Well, guess what? I did it with this campaign as well, just to figure that this campaign is at only four days left before the entire campaign is over. We have already used up all of our Doom Clock, so it's almost done and worse so. This retaliation mission here happens to be in the single only solid location where we could theoretically um, get the black side uh, back. So if we're losing this mission, we're losing the entire country and with losing the country we don't have enough days to make contact again. So it's GG and the campaign actually would fail. Well, knowing that of course, I started to um, load the original safe and here we go um, just want to give a bit of an appreciation where we stand so the guy is running two sparks a skirmisher which is barely lieutenant um, and two squaddy snipers and it appears for me by this little shotgun lying here that there was um, some sort of an assault now I don't want to sound rude or anything, but two sparks, a skirmisher, two sniper and an assault is not a good team composition. To be more precise, it is an awful, unbelievably bad team composition and I would highly, highly suggest to not play it. It, uh, has, no, it has almost no synergy and I don't even know why you would load up the team. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt because I actually don't know how the barracks look. Maybe he just didn't have anything else. but. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing, even if you have such a uh, such a, a group, we need to talk about positioning. Having two snipers and not using high ground, specifically if you have squaddy snipers that are, don't have the high aim yet, is wasteful. They should be standing up here and not down here. Secondly, if your team, right, and sparks are fast units, if your team could barely double move in order to get to your position, and you died up here, then something's wrong. This is way too far behind enemy lines. Yeah, and last but not least, I mean, the selection of equipment here is questionable. The only good thing is a mimic beacon. That's pretty much it. So whoever that was, I, let's assume it's uh, it was uh, an assault, is now cruel, cruelly uh, dying on the floor. He is bleeding out and there is really no way that we can save him unless we're sacrificing one of our troops, which we're of course not going to do. Secondly, he has written something or he's noted something about an Archon being triggered. So I would just give it a wild guess and say the body of this, um, of, uh, this Viper here is an Archon. So let's take a look. By the way, I haven't played this here. I literally evac them the last time and failed. Yeah, there's the Archon, as expected, standing somewhat there. Um, I guess what we want to do, really, is making sure that we can deal as much damage as possible and maybe even kill the Archon. So we're overdriving. Which means, for those of you who haven't used uh, Sparks so far, Overdrive uh, gives them three uh, actions this turn, and no action itself is turn ending. It's five, uh, five turns cooldown. It's kind of whenever you really need this extra power, then Overdrive is the way to go. So we're removing cover. Bringing the Viper down to four hit points and I guess we can just try to kill it there we go now 
now it's time to har harass uh, the Archon. Moving up with the second spark. So the reason why I don't like sparks, by the way, and why I've never bothered to buy the add-on before actually playing this here. So yeah, I needed to buy the add-on to make this here work. Um, the reason why I never bothered uh, with sparks is they are pretty decent early game units, but as soon as you're entering the later game, all of the XP that you have invested into them is kind of wasted. Come on. Very nice. Alright, good job. Getting the sniper up here. Well, that looked like efficient pathing. Alright, we trigger the next pack. Mutant plus Berserker. Interesting. Got our mutant. And we got our Berserk. We're bleeding out and I can't really do anything against that. So, As you command. I'd like to see if we can get the mutant down. The Berserk is not going to attack us as long as civilians are going to be there. Well, it's not the best chance, but I think it's overall worth it. Nice. Got a crit. Very nice. Okay, in case the mutant uh, changes his mind, uh, the Berserk changes his mind. We're going to give him two targets that are even more uh, interesting than our skirmisher, namely the two max. I'm attacking in melee because melee has 100% hit chance and more damage than the gun. There we go, down to 11. I can see that there's more down here. I wonder if we need to go there. That's the first civilian death. Commander, Advent is attacking off. They've got units in the AO that are ignoring our forces just to get a better shot at the civilians. Take those bastards down. We're trying to do that, Bradford. Thanks for the tip. There's a large group of civilians pinned down within range of your position. Sensors indicate hostile forces are closing in fast. We need to get in there before the aliens slaughter those people. Okay, we are going to do that, Bradford. the kill to our uh, to our skirmisher the life has left it. the resistance team is in the clear all right we They're saved three of them others. immediately which means three more to go 
and we got two more resistance units helping us out Max, in case you don't know it, can't take cover, so this here is unfortunately nothing that would work. I don't want to go to the edge yet. Moving the sniper all the way down here. That's a great cover position and probably also a great position generally. There is some loot down here. I can't afford to be greedy. I don't know how many enemies are going to be down there. So we're taking a peek here. She has squad side, but she doesn't have long uh, uh, long watch, so she can't overwatch on uh, squad side shots, which means we're just going to move her over here to maximize our field of fire. So now we're going to see where the next enemies are. Apparently there's a pack down here. And another pack there. I saw a mutant and a berserk. At least two different packs. Another mutant here is probably the same pack. So we're fighting against mutant and berserks almost exclusively. Huge amount of civilians, by the way. I'm wondering if I can just charge in and maybe save three of them. That would at least um, net us the mission, right? You know what? I think we're going to do that. Changing position. Taking a long wrapping shot. I will go. Well. Fuck. So these guys will not move unless we're helping them. I think we have no line of sight, at least not sufficient. This here could be a thing though. Bring down. Nice little damage, good job. Moving into cover. Recklessly pulling another pack. That wasn't optimal. But it's okay. We're in full cover. Should be fine. Let's take a shot at the mute uh, at the Berserk. There's another pack. Yep, charging in. So we're fighting against uh, four mutants and two berserks at the time. Wow. OK, 
Okay, we need to hurry. Oh, yet another pack. Six mutants and three berserks. That stinks. Are they taking any shots or is it just ta uh, taking cover? Okay. Apparently it's just taking cover and shooting randomly into the air. That's a good hit. Another solid hit. Alright. So this here is removing cover. It's uh, going to let one of the mutants fall and the other one uh, loses his cover as well. And afterwards we need to take cover. Well, the second one did not completely lose cover, but almost. This here is a pretty high chance to immediately kill this guy. I'd like to take it, 90% is good. Focusing on the mutants first. Second sniper shot here. Only 50% shots. That sucks. But that here would be a very solid shot. Might as well take it. It's better than the 50% shot. I think we're going to take the high ground here, just for the aim bonus, and since we're not the main target, really. Can't kill any mutant directly, this here is a pretty solid chance for crit. Yep, we shredded, but we haven't crit. do though is take a shot with the rocket launcher please yes no maybe it seems more like a no to me if I'm honest moving into full cover We're going to see a couple of dead civilians now. It 
least one of them missed. Not bad. So we are looking at how many survivors? Well, fuck it. One less, of course. These guys here are almost down. Another suppression. Lots and lots of suppressions. Come on. Looking at eight survivors, we can afford five more kills before this year is going to turn sour. Good to go. Our sniper. Take a 100% shot or 50-50. I think we're going with a 100% shot or almost with a, with a near kill. We take a 100% shot. That would be 10 damage. You know what? Well, a maximum of 10 damage. Let's take that. I think it's safer. We executed him. Good job. Overdrive. Yes, please. All right. We need to deal with the um, with the suppression here. And the way I like to do it is by really moving upstairs it's a bit risky because we expose ourselves to potential flanking maneuver but I think the, uh, the mutant will focus on the civilians first unfortunately unsuccessful we're overdriving can't afford to take another shot. Yeah. Well. I'm reloading. I'm trying to break this Overwatch here. It's actually a problem because uh, the suppression, because with the suppression, um, our chance of hitting them are relatively low. I don't want to melee a mutant. That's always a really bad idea. And since we do not have cover, their chances of hitting us are actually quite, quite good. Risk no fun. It's going to trigger an overwatch. Probably should have done that before. Uh, that was a mistake. I could have removed both of the overwatches. 
uh, both of the suppressions shouldn't have moved. I was hoping that with a move his aim would actually be lower, but that was a gamble and unnecessary one. We have lost a bit of firepower because uh, the second spark was actually decent with firepower. this guy here almost down let's try to kill the mutant here wonderful he's poisoned how many hit points does he have left two is unfortunately one too much So I know how we can get the mutant. A useful aid. Ignoring his cover from here. There we go. Down. Okay, we're running short on resistance um, fighters. I think we can't afford using many more. <laughs> He's climbing up. go good job okay so let's do this pistol shot Poisons him. Very good. Another rifle shot. Give me a minute. Doesn't seem all that difficult to me. That's one more down. I really don't want to be hit by that mu uh, by that berserk. So see you later, buddy. I'm just going to kite it. I said we have to kite it. Not that that he can follow me and almost kill me. Okay, I think we've got it. Where, where am I to go? It is dead. Menace one five, you secured the remaining civilians and there are well, hostile contacts on the scope. We lost two soldiers. One of them was my fault. Twenty years of peace and 
prosperity will not be undone by the reckless actions of a few misguided dissidents today. Oh gosh, let's take a look at the campaign. The way I remember it, it was a royal disaster. So, we have the spark unit, killed in action, but it had only three kills, so that's fine. Interesting how it's titled, her, her sacrifice is our strength, so it was a female uh, unit. And see, I was right, it was a ranger, it was a fucking ranger, oh my god. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at the armory. So this guy here had three snipers, another ranger, a specialist. With all that's been going on, we've never really had time to consider. And grenadiers left over and the Templar left over. Like, he had the full package of hundreds of hundreds of choices, and he has chosen to go in with two sparks, the skirmisher. Oh my god, it's just so bad, I don't, I don't want to get my head around. Um, he apparently has a colonel on this um, save game, which I'm not sure how he has done it. Um, let's take a look, we're netting July 29th, so that's March, April... May, June, July, that's month number five. And I'm pretty sure we're playing on Legendary. This is almost impossible to have a Colonel. I don't want to say that there is something fishy uh, going on, but having a Colonel and everyone else is Lieutenant and Staff Sergeant, right? Um, kind of tells me that this here is not 100% how it's supposed to be. 16 kills for a colonel incredibly low so unless he has um unless he has um, gained a major somehow and the major was an eight missions and uh, scored 16 kills that here is almost important I, I just i just don't know how that's possible so that's a big red flag um, for the purpose of this run, I am going to dismiss the soldier because I don't see how a colonel could have been here. And we're just treating this run as, as if this is the roster, okay? So this is how we come in and we just forget about um, the colonel because the colonel would give us access to um, certain guerrilla tactic school options specifically all of uh, these things here i don't know maybe he just promoted the soldier to get the squad size upgrades i have no idea whatever it is uh it's not going to happen on my watch uh we're playing it clean um let's take a very very quick look into how he skilled um all of uh all of uh, these uh, beautiful units. So we got a lightly wounded uh, mech. We have adaptive aim. When overdrive is activated, uh, no penalty. Versus gain a bonus point of armor and always provide high cover. I, like I said, I've never skilled mechs, so just take it for what it's worth. I've never looked into the skill set of uh, mechs. Um, but my e immediate um, reaction is the point of armor is not too bad. I would have probably also taken the aim. Then there is strike versus equip a heavy weapon um, plus two damage and have increased area of effect. Um, this is either melee versus heavy weapon. I like the melee strike, it seemed to be working out well. But then again, I wouldn't use that as a melee um, a unit. And intimidate when targeted by an attack, the enemy has a chance to panic. When overdrive is active, um, 
break through walls and cover when moving. That's actually not a bad ability. I would have probably uh, skilled Wrecking Ball. I'm not a big fan of getting attacked by enemies uh, at all. So, apologize. It's the first time that I'm seeing sparks in action, so I'm a bit curious. Um, what we're going to do is the typical uh, part. We are going to go through the characters real quick, the ones that, uh, that we want to use. Um, by the way, if you see a character like floating in midair, um, kind of doing random stuff, that's due to Anarchy Child. And um, I'm just changing outfits in this case because I certainly will not buy Anarchy Child. It's just not worth the money at all. It's one of the few things in XCOM 2 which I completely not appreciate. Um, so what we're doing here is I want to get our color coding in. I know that this guy apparently uh, totally likes kind of um, stealthy gray soldiers and I get it. Uh, each to his own I would say. Um, let's take a look after we are done with the first couple of soldiers here so many snipers by the way i don't know if he has a fetish for snipers or if he's just running with multiple snipers in his team regularly um, i mean snipers are a damage dealer okay and they are they can be compared with carries they become very very good in the late game but specifically on a run like the last one why would you take two completely mediocre snipers like squaddy uh, snipers with you if you have three well equipped snipers here you want to get them into the into the high end game and not level up everything every single character to level to uh, to lieutenant level that doesn't make any sense but anyways so almost done what we're going to check next is I want to take a bit of a peek um, into what he has skilled because I do have I do have my doubts that it's uh, that it's going to uh, that his research and um, and his upgrades are going to make much more sense than the rest that I've seen here. So a couple of sparks that he's apparently running, and that's okay. Um, dozens and dozens of squaddies. Templar, which is who is not used. Again, can't really understand that. Very strong class. No idea why you wouldn't use them. And apparently he doesn't like grenadiers for whatever reason. So that's somewhat of a bummer. In terms of Guerrilla Tactics School, we're looking at only the squad upgrades. He has a low income, very low, for, for a game that's so deep um, the into the run. Started, Should have probably um, uh, expanded way more. And look at that, not upgraded, not upgraded. So he either just upgraded to mag magnetic um, weapons, which would be very late, or he just did not really plan ahead. Missing the trooper corpses for the armor upgrade is something that is almost inexcusable. If you're playing 70 runs on uh, Legendary Iron Man, you need to know that that is going to come. Yeah, that is bad. So a couple of mistakes here. In terms of research, researching improved uh, pistols. But now I'm starting to think it's all just part of the alien's grand design. Has a couple of options for extra intel. Which would explain why the aliens went through so much trouble. Does not have research mech breakdown, so no blue screen rounds, which I do not really understand. Uh, mech, uh, research is, by the way, also the prerequisite for Illyrium, which then is the prerequisite for uh, getting better weapons. So, not really sure. 
experimental weapons not researched yeah a couple of uh, things here that do not really make sense has researched psionics this guy seems to be in psionics as well i don't understand why people are um, researching psionics that early in my case countering the body's rejection of the implanted chip sometimes it's easy to avoid yeah. seeing the bigger picture to this day i still ask myself whether it was so resistance ring okay guerrilla tactics school okay proving ground uh, without anything that he's building why is that why don't we have uh... why don't we already begin with the spider suit very 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 good um, armor should have been one of the first things that he's doing can build another spark theoretically yeah okay anyway so that didn't work out so well either resistance communications so he could have more contacts that's fine i'm wondering where the training center is and why that isn't here and where the infirmary is and why that isn't here either so that's a bummer anyways now to the interesting part guys let's take a look at what the fuck is going on so when i was taking uh, when i was seeing what was going on i was like oh my gosh that's not happening right the only thing that we could do is and i don't want to let it run down too much we can go into the advent black side and that's actually what the next mission is going to be about let me prepare this mission here so that we can uh, that we can uh, appropriately uh, raid it um, i'll be back in the next uh, part of uh, the royal fuck up or the royal disaster and we're going to raid the black side to at least uh, stabilize it a little bit like i said it's it's pretty much a disaster <laughs> so if you liked it give it a thumbs up um, and leave a comment down below uh, this is going to be season two of saving your campaign